Hey everyone, my name is Ajay and today we will talk about AWS Virtual Gateway which is basically used for your VPN connection and when we talk about the VPN connection it is very very similar to what we were doing so far on the legacy network especially for the Cisco or maybe Juniper there is no such difference in terms of the functionality when you connect to cloud so let's try to understand what are the components involved when we try to build or our VPN connectivity to the cloud. So one side is always going to be your customer gateway. These customer gateways, these are going to be the hardware or maybe the software device which is installed on the customer gateway, customer end basically. So it can be a Cisco router, it can be a firewall. These symbols, what you see, here I'm going to focus if you have the Cisco on your customer end. On the cloud side, it is going to be kind of virtual environment, but you will have the capability to show all these parameters what we configure on the customer end. So let's try to understand what is supported, what is not supported, and how do we configure the VPN gateways. So first of all, you're going to have your VPC, which is basically the network boundary, what you create on the AWS network. And VPG, it only supports IPv4. So IPv6 is something not supported. It also doesn't support your path empty discovery. So what is a path empty discovery? It's basically is used to determine the path empty between two devices. You might have the variety of the devices in between. There's some al always overhead which comes from the IPsec. So it, it doesn't have any capability to determine what is going to be the empty value which it can discover between two hosts. So you need to define it manually. So when we talk about VPNs, the, these VPNs always either on the policy based or you go for the route based. So policy based, where we configure our phase one, phase two, and you need to define the routing domain or the encryption domain basically. And when you have the route based, basically you are going to configure these route based where you need to configure the tunnels on both the ends and then you are going to run some sort of the routing. So when it comes to the routing, you can either go for the dynamic routing or you can go for the static routing. That is going to be your choice. When we go for route based tunnels, so you can run your dynamic protocol. For example, you see I'm running the BGP here. So this is my customer gateway. This is my VPN gateway. You should have ASN number. And uh, while configuring this end, which is going to be the BGW, AWS will ask whether you want to define ASN number or it go for the default. So default is going to be 64512, which comes from the private ASN. This side, you can have public or you might have private, it's up to you. Let's talk about ASN a bit. So, Two flavors of ASNs are available. Either you can go for two byte or you can go for four byte ASN numbers. So once you go for the two byte, it gives you the ASN number which is start from zero and it can go up to 65535. And there's a private range which is allocated. If you want to run BGP in your private environment, so or maybe you're running it with the service provider, but that might be your MPLS link, etc., etc. That's a private to you. You're not on the internet. You can use these ASN numbers. So these are the private ranges which we are going to use it. Four byte, it gives you another range, and this is a big number, and this is a private. You can use ASN number from here as well. To understand more about the ASN, so you can go for this website, which is going to be the dnschecker.org, and you can look up for the ASN number. If you want, if I want to see what is this ASN number 718, and it's a random number which, which I have chosen from this range, you can check, go for the lookup ASN, and it is going to tell me this ASN is something owned by this organization, which is going to be the dot. 
So like that, you can check any of the ASIN number. These is kind of available in the public registry. So when we are trying to configure our tunnel to AWS, AWS kept in mind your high availability. So technically, you are going to get two IP addresses, and those are going to be the public in nature. So PIP1 and PIP2, these are the two IP addresses going to be on AWS side. Those are going to be the public. Customer IP address, that is also going to be public IP address. And the reason behind you are forming a tunnel which is based on your internet infrastructure. So technically you are talking over the internet IP addresses. And this is an example for the route base. So technically you are going to have the two tunnels also. So one tunnel is going to terminate on PIP1. Another tunnel which is going to terminate on PIP2. And you will be running the VGP here. So these tunnel one and tunnel two IP address, these are going to be your private IP address. And the default range is going to be slash 30 IP V4 CIDR block, which comes from 169.254.0.0 slash 16 range. These are the reserve range. You cannot use it. So when you are generating the configuration for the customer end, you can leave it to the default and AWS is going to assign these ranges to you. So it's going to be slash 30. And when we are talking about the policy base, so policy base is still going to be two tunnels. One is going to be active, one is going to be the passive. And this is something based on the policy. So think about the encryption domain. And the encryption domain, you cannot differentiate that this traffic should go over this tunnel or this traffic should go over this tunnel. So since you are having same range, both sides, your customer range is fixed, your AWS range is fixed, so you can only use one tunnel at a time. And once this tunnel fails for any reason, your traffic will be redirected from here. So it still maintains the high availability and the redundancy, but in our previous example, when we were talking about the route base, both the tunnels are going to be active active and you can utilize those let's talk about some of the limitation you might see or face with the policy based so this is my customer end subnet which is going to be 20.10.10.0 slash 24 and my aws vpc range is going to be 10 10 10 0 slash 24. so as i mentioned earlier when you're using the policy base Based on the encryption domain, it can only use one of the tunnel. So here we see this is active one. My outbound traffic and the inbound traffic, it has to be on the same tunnel. Having just this encryption domain, it might not be a very ideal situation. You might have multiple subnet masks on the customer end. So the challenge you are going to see, let's try to understand that. So when you use a policy based VPN connection to connect your AWS, AWS limits the number of security association to single pair. What it means, you should have your encryption domain limited to one association. That means you should not use multiple encryption domain. what if we have multiple domains so for example i have 20 here and somebody introduced 30 and they also want to talk to the aws so the problem you are going to see your customer gateway device it is not going to deny any of any sort of the configuration what you are going to make it will say you can add multiple encryption domain but policy based vpn with more than one pair of security association drop existing connection when a new connection with a different security association initiate so for example if this traffic is going on and suddenly you see some traffic is originated from here so what will happen it is going to be dropped this will be active and similarly if this is running and you initiate some more traffic here so it might happen this will be dropped so you will see some sort of the connection drop. So what you need to do, you need to maintain this subnet 
to 0, 0, 0. So that is going to be the ideal situation. So if I create my encryption domain 0, 0, 0 to 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 0 slash 24. Now I have one only one security association. So the challenges you might see maybe for security purpose, these two ranges were supposed to be allowed. But now I'm allowing everything. I might have another range which is 40, which can also communicate now. So what you can do on the AWS side, you can go for security groups. You can go for network ACL, and there you can control or modify these ACLs to restrict any sort of traffic which you want to prevent. Let's now talk about route based. So in route route based, as I mentioned earlier, you are going to have two tunnels, and those can be active. They will be technically active, but it's up to you if you really want to route your traffic or the single tunnel. So how basically it works on the customer end, you might have a router which is capable of handling asymmetric routing. Or you might have some sort of the firewall which doesn't support Asymmetric, however, it is going to support your symmetry. So when I say symmetric, it should not happen. The traffic is going this way and it is coming this way. That is going to fail. And uh, to make it work, you might need to do something extra on those firewalls. So let's try to understand before we talk about asymmetric and symmetric. Let's understand how the traffic flow is going to be. So you have two active tunnels. My this is my first tunnel. This is my second tunnel. On AWS side, it is going to be the public IP addresses, two public IP addresses. And the way they are going to provision, first thing you need to look at the routing on your customer and device from where you are receiving the routes. So they are basically going to play with MED. And there is a reason for playing with MED. If I say all the parameters here on the customer and they are same. So AWS is going to tag maybe the tunnel first or the route which goes here. They will be coming from MED 100 and all the routes which is coming from here, they are tagged with MED 200. So 100 by default is going to be your preferred. And the reason behind when you look at the BGP path selection, it is based on that because I have not touched any other attributes so far it's just the MED so lower MED is preferred hence your outbound traffic that is going to be coming here on this tunnel and going forward we are going to talk about how we can tweak how can you make it symmetric asymmetric etc etc so here if I see my let's assume this is a router Cisco router and if it is a router, it is going to support your asymmetry. So my outbound can be from here. My inbound can be from here or it can be from here. So no matter the traffic is coming from where, you are going to use both the tunnels in active active fashion. If you look at the AWS documentation, it is highly recommended that you should use a device which supports asymmetric routing. And the reason behind these two ends endpoints on AWS, they, they are giving you two and the reason is high availability. Some time to time they will perform some sort of the maintenance and that time they play with MAD. So they will lower down the MAD value so that particular path is preferred now it is up to the customer what type of device you want to use so let's let's assume this is a Cisco router which supports asymmetric at this moment my outbound is preferred over here if they do some sort of maintenance they might make it 50 
So that time your outbound will be preferred from here. So it doesn't matter. Route which is coming from this red mark, they will be preferred. So traffic can go this way, traffic might come this way or this way. This is going to work. Now the challenge I see when you have a firewall which doesn't support your asymmetric routing. So you need to make it the same way. So my inbound and outbound traffic, it goes over the same tunnel. However, this tunnel remain active. To make it inbound preferred from here, same tunnel, you can play with AS prepend. What it mean? This is my subnet, which I am advertising to AWS. If I do the AS prepending, so default I leave to this. And while advertising same subnet to this peer, I'm going to do the AS path prepending. So lower AS path will be preferred. Prepending makes it bigger because you are adding your same AS again and again. So that way you can influence your inbound traffic. So now I see my outbound goes in the same direction. My inbound comes the same direction. If it is a, even if it is a firewall, it is going to support the scenario. Considering this is a firewall, I can play with MED again. So while advertising here on this peer, I say my MED value is 200 and advertising over this tunnel, I say my MED value is 100. Now this path will be preferred for outbound and inbound. So even this case is applicable, you can make your firewall work. You can also play with weight and solve this asymmetric routing. You can also play with the local preference. So for example, whatever the routes I receive from this peer, I put some LP value and whatever the routes which is coming from here, I put some LP value. That way also we can solve this problem. But keep in mind, if it is a device which supports asymmetric, it makes your life easy. If it is a device doesn't support asymmetric routing, you need to do some tweaks here and there. Now let's take a look, where do you find these options? So under the VPC, you can see virtual private network. And while configuring these VPN side to side, you need to configure three different tabs. One is going to be your customer gateway. Second is going to be your virtual private gateway. And third, you need to create side to side VPN connections. So first thing is going to be create customer gateway. So in customer gateway, what basically you are going to have, you're going to configure the remote. A remote is going to be your customer device. It can be router, it can be ASA, and that should have one public IP address. Once you hit create customer gateway, you are going to see these fields. One is going to be the name tag, which is going to be the optional. As you can see in this example, you can put it as a customer gateway, CGW-01, BGP ASN, that is up to you, whatever you want to choose it. So you can put your AS in here, what you're using on the customer end. Third thing is going to be the IP address. This is going to be the public IP address, which you can see here, which is assigned to the customer device. We're not playing with the certificate, so you can leave it blank. Optionally, you can put the name of the device or the model of the device, basically. Here in this example, we are, I have just mentioned Cisco ASA. And then you can hit create customer gateway. The next thing you need to create the virtual private gateway. It's very, very easy. You just put the name as a tag, which, which I have mentioned AWS VPG-01. ASN, either you can leave it to the default. 
or you can create or mention your customer ASN. Put the tag if you want to do it or else create BPG. This is the most important stuff which you need to configure, create the VPN connection. It is based on the gateways we created so far. One was the customer gateway, one was the AWS gateway. So you can name this connection, whatever you want to name it. Then target gateway type, it is going to be VPG. You see the option transit gateway and we will talk about transit gateway in upcoming sections not associated so the third option not associated if you don't want to associate it maybe you have a plan to associate it later so we'll go for this vpg now it is asking you to choose the vpg so if you already created a vpg you can choose it from the drop down customer gateway if you have the existing one that will come here from the drop down if you don't have it you can create a new from here as well option for the routing either you go for dynamic or you go for static if you go for dynamic that requires bgp and uh, these are the fields going to be the optional whether you want to mention local ipv4 network cider and remote so it is also mentioned here what is going to be the role the ipv4 cider range on the customer gateway on premises side that is allowed to communicate over the vpn tunnels and the default is going to be 0000 slash zero so this is optional if you want to restrict something or it is going to allow or going to receive all the rows from bgp and going to install and vpc routing table If you go for static, you need to mention the remote IP prefixes. Those are going to be installed as a part of the route table. So you can see the description as well. Enter one or more IP prefix in CIDR notation separated by commas to advertise it to your VPC. In BGP, we were learning all those routes. Here you need to mention all the prefixes, the remote prefixes basically on the customer end. Then you have an option for tunnel one and tunnel two. So let's talk about tunnel one and tunnel two IP addresses. So we all know it, if you're going for the route based VPN, you need to configure two tunnels basically. So AWS gives you the option, either you go for AWS default options or you edit it. Same thing is applicable for both. Look at the IP address first. A size slash 30 IPv4 cider block from 169.254.0.0 slash 16 range. It is going to be generated by AWS. Pre-shared key is also something which is generated by aws however you have option if you want to use your own range if you want to use your own pre-shared key you can edit it and default is going to be generated by aws similarly the same options are also available for tunnel 2 you have option to edit the parameter. Those comes from AWS default. So go for edit tunnel one option. You can see it is mentioned there are the phase one and phase two parameters. So phase one parameter, we do configure the encryption. You can choose your encryption from here. Similarly for phase two encryption, you can choose it from here. Integrity option, algorithm, your Diffie Hellman group, all these fields are available. You can also choose whether you want to go for IC1 versus IC2. Then you have phase one lifetime, phase two lifetime, rekey, replay. So, so many parameters are there. And it's almost same when you configure the remote device, whether it's a router or firewall. 
recommended option you should go for the default one but however if you have a choice if you want to change it you can another very important uh, step is going to enable the route propagation and you can enable it from the route table which is attached to your vpc as of now since i'm not doing the live demo hence i have not created any vpg but this is the option you go to the route table go to the route propagation edit route propagation and enable it why this is important the reason behind we were dealing with pgp all the routes which what we learned from the customer end those has to be installed in vpc so this should be enabled even if you go for the static you were mentioning the ip prefixes those are also supposed to get installed under the route table so that vpc route table knows to reach your remote customer remote i need to redirect this traffic to vpg you can go for this link what i have mentioned here and it gives you the sample configuration also for your remote end so if you want to use the static configuration it will have some sample file for different vendors we can take a look if you go for the dynamic configuration there are sample configuration files also when you create the vpg in your real environment you have option you can choose a vendor and generate the file and that is going to be based on these sample files so you get the ready-made configuration for your remote end under vpn connection once that is created you are going to see option like that you can mention this is a remote vendor that was optional as well initially if you have not mentioned it you can mention it later on you, you should mention the platform you should mention what is the software and you can download this file which can be used as a configuration file for the remote end thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video